David, I'm just going to use this if you don't mind. Hello, hello. <laughs> probably don't need it. You could probably hear me without it. Anyway, good, good evening, everybody. It really is a great pleasure to have you here. First of all, could I ask you if you, if you could switch off your phones, which I presumably means mine as well. <laughs> um, and then, uh, uh, my name is Terry Markman. I'm a board member of the Freemark Foundation. And when I joined originally, my hair was very black, so you know how long I've been here. Um, more important, I'd like to welcome you all to Northwoods. This is a great, great privilege to have been brought into such a building. It's over 200 years old, I believe. And uh, very, very old means good. We like old to a certain extent. Most of our ideas, of course, are old. There's nothing new about individual freedom, about rule of law, about all these things. So that's the good part of it. But it's also good that it's a new place. We need a new place. We need to go new places. And I think that we will have, we need some sort of change. So we've got continuity in the fact that it's old. And we've got a change of a, of, of a new address. Um, I'd like now to say that, uh, do, do they know the program or not? I don't, I don't know. Sorry, I thought maybe there were programs. So we're starting off with Martin von Staden, who will be talking. Martin is going to be talking about the past intellectual history of, of, of the Freemark Foundation. <clears throat> he joined the Freemark Foundation about seven or eight years ago in 2016. And since then, he has been with IRR and with Pitts at He's back again. We're delighted with that. <clears throat> he was appointed head of policy in 2013. And he is also now the deputy director of the EXCO and on the rule of law uh, project which is probably the most appropriate place for him to be. He wrote a book on the, on the Constitution and the Rule of Law some years ago, which, is a, which was an introduction. Um, so if you don't know what it's all about, try with this one to start, but I don't think it's all that easy as modern. More important, that the Rule of Law has got some very intellectual, some intellectual giants on it. I think of Rex von Skullquake, I think of Rob Vivian, I think he was going to be here. I think of Mark Oppenheim and so on. And Martin, I must say, is up there with him. There's just no question. He is one of the intellectual giants of the future of the Free Market Foundation. And Martin, I'd ask you please now to say a few words. Thanks. Uh, thank you, everyone. Yeah, I'm, I'm humbled by Terry's introduction. Uh, uh, I joined this year in 2023, rejoined. Um, I was doing my, my uh, bachelor's degree in law in 2013, uh, so I, I wouldn't call myself an authority at that stage. But Terry uh, started us on a, on a good note um, because the, the individual you see there is none other than Albert Van Dicey. Uh, the man who has become most associated with the concept of the rule of law. He's a British uh, intellectual, and which the free, the free Market Foundation really takes this concept of the rule of law very seriously with its rule of law project, which uh, this past September we were in, in court uh, uh, as an amicus in a hate speech case, so a very active part of, of what we are and what we do. But I show you Dicey's face uh, not to uh, make a point about the rule of law per se, uh, but instead to illustrate exactly what I do not mean when I say that things at the Free Market Foundation a few years ago were dicey. Um, uh, that is, uh, I believe this is closer to the faces that some of you uh, uh, made and certainly that some of us were making inside the Free Market Foundation uh, during the course of, uh, let's say, a little squabble. Um, and that is the squabble that is the elephant in this beautiful room, uh, and there's no point in avoiding it. Uh, it brought this organization really to the brink of collapse. Uh, and in a sense, I think we are here today to celebrate that collapse is not what in fact came to pass. So, so I am here to briefly talk about where we as the Free Market Foundation come from, both historically and intellectually. Uh, and in a moment, David will uh, uh, talk about where we're going. Now, the Free Market Foundation was uh, founded in August of 1975, that's about uh, 48 years ago, uh, on the initiative of the Association of Chambers of Commerce of South Africa, or ASOCOM, 
uh, of which Leon Lowe was the legal manager at the time. A steering committee uh, comprising Leon as the chair, Ed Emery, Mike Lillard, Fred McCaskill, Andrei Spies, and Mark Swanepoel was responsible for establishing what would ultimately become the Free Market Foundation. Lou Scher, uh, the president of ASOCOM, uh, briefly served as the FMF's first chairperson, uh, uh, very swiftly followed by Michael Conway O'Dowd, uh, who I'm sure many of you would be familiar with, who served as chairman uh, up until 2005, I believe, uh, uh, so many years. So in 1977, Lou Scher explained that the FMF was generally going to limit itself to the field of economics. Um, but due to its dedication to freedom of enterprise, uh, the, the fewer restrictions, economic restrictions, that were on economic activity, the better. And he said, quote, that all races should be able to compete freely in all sectors, 1977. Uh, the FMF uh, f functioned informally for about a year since its founding, before it was registered in October of 1976, and finally held its inaugural congress in 1977. Dirk Herzog, chair of the Oude Meester Group and co-founder of Re Rembrandt, uh, was the first chair of the FMF's executive committee, and he would later serve as the president of the FMF in the late 1980s and the early uh, 1990s. And he also, uh, during that time, served as the chair of the Afrikaans Handels Institute. The, FMF, uh, the FMF's founding was formally backed by ASOCOM, as one would expect, the South African Society of Marketers, uh, the SA Federated Chamber of Industries, uh, uh, SACI, um, the National African Federation of Chambers of Commerce, or NAFCOC, and the African Sandos Institute again. The first president of the FMF, uh, Stefan de Toy Foyun, who was chairman of uh, what later became Mercantile Bank later, and was also quite ironically for what he said, uh, he was at the time also the chairman of the Bantu Investment Corporation. Uh, he explained that people of all of South Africa's various races should acquire skin in the game of the free enterprise system, which South Africa claimed very vociferously it was uh, uh, subscribed to. And uh, the Toy for Yun said that this must include the progressive removal of discriminatory laws uh, and extending full home ownership uh, to all South Africans. And the Free Market Foundation's Kaya Lum project uh, uh, very proudly today is giving effect to these words that were expressed uh, several decades ago. Now, uh, the, the fine gentleman there on the left, uh, some of you may recognize, is none other than uh, Friedrich August von Hayek, uh, who uh, was here in South Africa at an FMF function uh, in 1978, and he today still remains one of our uh, intellectual heroes. Um, Milton Friedman kind of also uh, made an appearance sometime later, and he's He's nice and everything, but, but that's the real deal. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, no, no offense meant to, to Friedman, he's great. Uh, so in the 1980s, the Free Market Foundation held privatization out as a solution to South Africa's racial strife. Uh, Leon Lowe explained that the privatization of our state-owned entities um, uh, and, and even functions of state would depoliticize economic sectors which, in which they operated. And here one thinks of the trains and the buses and so forth, uh, which were simply forced to operate within the, the prevailing state ideology, as one might expect. So the Free Market Foundation played an important role uh, also during the transition out of apartheid. Uh, uh, too, when uh, alongside the Institute of Race Relations, uh, who remains close friends to us today, opposed the inclusion of the laundry list of welfare entitlements that call themselves rights in our constitution today. Um, uh, and the FMF and the IRR understood back then what I think most or many South Africans are discovering as a reality today, uh, which is that the state does not have unlimited resources to dish out and that eventually rent-seeking will start to do significant harm to the economy and we're, we're living through this today. Nonetheless, even though we did end up with these entitlements in the Constitution, the FMF and others were successful in lobbying for a relatively strong guarantee of private property rights in the Constitution and for a so-called limitations clause that, at least in theory, sets a very high bar before government may simply limit uh, our civil liberties. So the Free Market Foundation's post-apartheid uh, journey has also been eventful. I don't want to downplay that, but it's been perhaps less exciting. And I think many of you will be more familiar with, with that history, so I will not do, dwell on that now. But I'm not here only to talk about uh, the history of the foundation per se. Uh, I 
I am working on a longer form book that uh, will be published on that topic in the hopefully not too distant future. Uh, government is keeping me busy on, on other matters. Um, but instead, I want to spend some time now talking about where we come from in a, in, in a heritage sense. What is our, our heritage? So in an editorial from uh, 1976, the uh, Free Market Foundation said of itself that, quote, the Free Market Foundation is the only organization in the republic with the singular goal of advancing capitalism. This word, capitalism, is maligned today, um, uh, uh, perhaps largely because it was popularized by the enemies of capitalism. Uh, it was popularized uh, by, by people like Karl Marx and, and his successors. But we as free marketeers are not afraid of being labeled. Uh, and increasingly in South Africa, uh, labels carry me le less and less meaning uh, and le have less and less effect, I would say. So we have made capitalism our own. Uh, so what does this word mean? Um, so another individual who offends many people. Uh, the uh, philosopher and novelist Ayn Rand wrote that, quote, capitalism is a social system based on the recognition of individual rights, including property rights, in which all property is privately owned. She clarified perhaps the most important characteristic of this social system of capitalism, uh, uh, and that is, as uh, she said, quote, in a capitalist society, all human relationships are voluntary. The Free Market Foundation is an advocacy group that is unashamed in our liberalism, we are unashamed in our capitalism, and we are unashamed in our individualism. That alone might be contentious to most people, uh, but another thing that we are unashamed of, which uh, David will speak of in a moment, is our anti-statism. The niceties about the nature of government action in South Africa, we think, need to be properly relegated to the dustbin of, of history, and we fail to do that at our own peril. In a statist society, human relationships are certainly anything but voluntary. So we at the FMF stand on the shoulders of giants. People like Frederick Bastiat, Frederick Hayek, Walter Williams. These are all people who have had a, and continue to have a significant influence on the, the effectiveness and the direction of the Free Market Foundation. But also there are people inside the organization. The contributions of Eustace Davy and Temba Nolichungu, of Jason Erbach, cannot be um, underemphasized. The likes of departed colleagues like Don Caldwell, like Michael O'Dowd, like Mark Swanepoel and Jan Lombard go unremembered as giants in the global cause for economic freedom. Gail Day, who is currently cycling around the world, uh, is perhaps the, um, uh, in the very recent history of the FMF, the, the one person who can be credited with keeping this organization alive. She had help, of course, from our dedicated team, many of whom are here today, uh, and uh, from people like former colleagues, Chris Hutton, uh, who, who was with the FMF up, up until recently, also with, withering the storm uh, that it had to go, uh, go through. But without Gail, truly, uh, the troubles of the last few years would have meant the end of the foundation. But we dare not, of course, forget Leon Lowe. I will... Uh, First, go through some of these pictures. For instance, uh, there is Leon Lowe uh, in 1986 uh, at the uh, Free Market Award bestowed on uh, an event bestowed on Ian Heverington. Uh, the bottom there, you see none other than the great Walter Williams, who tragically passed away, I believe, earlier this year. Uh, he is standing there with Simon Fisk, who received the Free Market Foundation's first Free Market Award. Um, there is Temba Nolachungu, he's still one of our directors, uh, the evil Chris Hani peering over his shoulder, uh, and uh, there uh, sitting next to him is uh, Baleka Mbete, and uh, Leon is also uh, in that picture. Uh, this was from the transition where the FMF exerted that, that important influence, uh, classical liberal influence on the creation of our constitution uh, uh, for, for what that's worth. Uh, here we have Michael O'Dowd, um, who was a long-time chair, as I said, from the 1970s up until the 2000s. Uh, he passed away, I believe, also in 2005. Uh, and here we have Eustace Davies in this uh, bottom right picture uh, there on, on the left. Um, he's still with us, uh, still a director at the FMF. That's in 1983, uh, where they were handing over the Free Market Award to Professor Geert de Wet. Uh, he's unfortunately the fellow with his back stank towards us. 
But I brought up Lyon because uh, it's, it's worth saying that our parting of ways of Lyon was extremely, extremely acrimonious, to say the very least. And there is no use in denying this. Um, but the contribution that Lyon made to the cause of free markets and civil liberty in this country through this organization are also completely undeniable, and we dare not deny them. And while our paths as the FMF and Lyon may never cross again, uh, we do wish him all the best with uh, his new endeavors. And we do really hope that uh, he can uh, find peace in his heart uh, with how things have, have turned out. And our eyes are truly firmly on the future, and we are quite optimistic about that. And I will chat to you a bit later again, but for now, I thank you. Thank you, Martin. Um, when you mentioned Milton Friedman, it reminds me, I don't know, I can't remember when he was here, but he was definitely here probably in the 80s or so. And the story, I wasn't there, he was in Durban giving a, uh, a speech. And at the end of the speech, somebody got up and says, was he Professor Dr. Friedman? Uh, that's the most incredible speech I've made, you've ever, I've ever heard. I am totally convinced that what you're doing is right. And Friedman apparently said to him, Listen, if you're so easy to convince, then somebody else could convince you exactly the opposite. Just you've got to take more than just one hour. <laughs> and then you also touched on, the, on Walter Williams. What is not known by a lot of people is that Walter Williams is the reason why Timber became involved with the Free Market Foundation. Uh, Timber apparently watched, I can't remember exactly how he got it, but he got hold of a video from Walter Williams. His background was socialism, socialist, Marxist, you name it, uh, a true, uh, true uh, freedom fighter, free for freedom fighter, should I say. And he saw a video of, uh, of Walters, and he watched it, and he was very unhappy. I don't know how many times he watched it, but he watched it looking to see if he could find the fault in it, and he couldn't. He eventually was so intellectually honest that he realized that he had been wrong all the time, and he did a 360, or what was it, 180 degrees conversion. So he's now very, very... Uh, in, in favor of free markets, liberalism, and so on. And just one other idea that you mentioned, in the 90, early 90s, leading up to the new constitution, we had what we called project transition. And we did a hell of a lot of work. I can't remember how much, but it must have been paper like this. And we all were convinced that this was going to the basement, the, the, the classic uh, file 13 or whatever. And if we only we'd known that what had really happened to it. Some years later, we had lunch with a guy who had been one of the secretariat there. And he said to us, I hate you guys, I really do. Do you know you were the only people who sent, well, not the only, but you were the people, whenever we got a free market foundation uh, submission, we had to read the damn thing. And it was very influential in our thinking. So you never know, as, as, as who was it? I think Milton Friedman, he said, you never know when lightning strikes. So just some, some other history here. I'd like to now to introduce uh, David, um, as you know, David was announced as the uh, new CEO of the Free Market Foundation about a year ago. In fact, it's a year and two days ago. I understand that you were announced there. Um, he started the, at the FMF at the beginning of this year and joined from the race relations where he spent four years. He will speak on the values of the FMF and the new strategic decision. I just want to mention that I would like to seriously congratulate the board simply because they did a hell of a good job of choosing this candidate. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Terry. Uh, that's a very flattering uh, introduction. Um, but I would like to congratulate the board, uh, not for appointing me, <laughs> but uh, for uh, steering the ship of the Free Market Foundation through rather treacherous waters. Very sad that our chairman, Rex von Skalkveig, is not here today because he was one of the people who carried the Free Market Foundation on its shoulders, on his shoulders, on his, his broad, strong shoulders. Um, and Gail Day was already mentioned by Martin, and uh, she, I believe, is tuning in live on the uh, YouTube channel to, together with, I assume, hundreds of others around the world. Um, so hello, Gail, and thank you for everything that you did. And uh, interestingly enough, the Free Market Foundation uh, bestowed its inaugural Gail Day Unsung Heroes Award recently in Cape Town. Uh, to the founders, the developers of the ESCOM Sapush app, uh, who I think are true uh, unsung heroes in South Africa, uh, who have helped to guide us through uh, load shedding. Um, so my role today is 
uh, to reflect, I think, some of the values and the principles that are underpinning the work of the Free Market Foundation. And uh, we get very busy uh, making submissions to Parliament, writing op-eds, recording YouTube videos, um, but you have to understand what is the purpose of your activity. Frenetic activity, uh, directionless activity is, is really pointless. We need to advance the cherished ideas and principles that have fared humanity so well over many centuries, and uh, which unfortunately uh, are values that are sometimes taken for granted and which are in fact often under siege. So what are those principles exactly? Well, the first is the idea of individual liberty. We believe that a just society depends on the freedom of individuals to, and voluntary communities to govern their own lives. And I think that idea of voluntary communities, so you opt in, uh, there is a, a principle of consent that governs your actions with others and your interactions with others. Um, and this recognizes the fundamental dignity that all individuals have, regardless of their race, uh, their sex, their ethnicity, or their religion. Um, and that individuals are self-directed, and that they are the agents of their own lives, and are not determined by the decision ma decisions of politicians or bureaucrats in, in a far-off distant capital. Uh, they are individual agents with their, their own purpose and their own uh, values and, and objectives. So we want to recognize that uh, in the work that we do and in the policy prescriptions that we make. The next is private property. Private property rights, we believe everyone must have the freedom to acquire, enjoy, and dispose of property as they see fit, and that these rights should be secure and enforceable. These are universal rights. There are many economic arguments for private property rights, as the Peruvian economist Hernando de Soto has taught us in his research. Uh, private property rights enable you, particularly the poor, to get collateral for a loan or to pass on their assets to their children and their grandchildren. Um, the uh, private property rights are essentially the building blocks of a free market economy. But it's more than just a beneficial economic policy. Uh, private property rights are really the extension of your fundamental rights as a human being, uh, your rights of ownership, which are intrinsic uh, to you. And unfortunately, in South Africa, private property rights have been unevenly applied throughout our history. But where private property rights have been applied, and enforced with the protection of the law, uh, there has been great benefit and has formed the foundation for, for flourishing. So the Kai Lum project was mentioned earlier. That is an initiative that we as the Free Market Foundation are very proud of. Uh, Terry, who's been the master of ceremonies today, he's been a key actor in that, together with the late uh, Perry Feldman. We also have to acknowledge the, all of the conveyances, the uh, volunteers, the donors who have enabled the Kailam project to succeed, that has essentially empowered more than 10,000 South Africans with title deeds for their homes to recognize their right of ownership. And we hope to uh, extend and, and uh, continue that project into the future. Thank you. So that, I think, is, is our principles in action. Uh, we are a think tank, but we're also a do tank. Uh, we want to see uh, these changes take effect in, in our country, and that is a very effective way to do that. Free enterprise is another core principle. We believe that everyone must be free to trade, to compete, or cooperate with others, and that the pursuit of profit is the greatest driver of human prosperity. Uh, we notice in public discourse in South Africa that the idea of profit-seeking is somehow uh, laden with negativity. Uh, we want to change that. Uh, Profit-seeking is natural. It is beneficial for the person uh, who buys and for the person who sells. Um, as long as that relationship is consensual, uh, we think that, that that is a fantastic thing. And we want many businesses, small and large, to flourish in South Africa. And if we want to develop South Africa's economy, we need to create more wealth in this country. And we do that by freeing businesses and individuals up uh, to exchange with one another. Limited government is another core principle. 
What is the role of the state, we are often asked. It is a highly constrained role. We believe that the government must be constitutionally constrained in its scope and power, and that its duty is to protect individual liberty and private property. It needs to be the enforcer of the basic rights of all citizens. At the moment, we have the opposite of limited government. We seem to have unlimited government in South Africa. And the paradox is that as state functions collapse, the basic duties of the state to uphold law and order and to protect private property rights as, those, uh, as that capacity crumbles, we also see the state trying to continually widen its scope and in involving itself uh, through regulatory action or through legislation in the minute affairs of, of individuals uh, throughout society. We want government to go back to a highly constrained uh, model. And protecting and upholding the rule of law is, is essential to that. All right, so these principles feed into our broader strategy as an organization. And what is that strategy exactly? Well, as you've noted from Martin's excellent presentation, public policy advocacy has been a key part of the Free Market Foundation's work. We will continue to do that, to proudly and forcefully articulate the benefits of individual freedom and free enterprise in a market economy under the rule of law. So we will continue to advocate for those timeless principles. But we are also realistic. We know that reform won't happen of its own accord. Change requires public pressure, and we are the pressure. We want to build pressure through our public advocacy on politicians, policymakers, and other decision makers in society to create more freedom in South Africa. Freedom won't uh, just emerge. We need to, to make that, that argument uh, clearly and forcefully. Uh, so we will continue with submissions to Parliament. We will write uh, uh, letters to the newspaper, indignant letters. Um, but we also understand that uh, the project here is a lot larger than that, um, that merely trying to uh, have polite engagements over a cup of tea with the minister, uh, that, that's not going to affect the change that we need. Uh, that, that strategy, I think, has reached... Um, the end of its, of its usefulness. So feeding off of this is the idea of state proofing. I'm very proud to have uh, the CEO of the business group, Saka uh, uh, Mr. Piet Leroux here with us this evening. And this idea, this concept of state proofing is something that Saka uh, has developed in its own work. And it is an acknowledgement that the state is indeed failing and that has caused various negative externalities because as the state's tentacles has gotten involved in more and more areas of society and the economy, when that state breaks down, it creates a lot of destruction. But that doesn't mean that South Africa is failing just because the state is failing. The idea of state proofing is that you need to build political power outside of the state and to mitigate against harmful government actions as well. So there are a number of practical steps which we are going to be advocating and which you can state-proof yourself. But really, fundamentally, state-proofing is also a mindset. It is a shift in this idea that the government must do everything. We often hear around the proverbial braai people saying, government must do X or government must do Y. I think we need to change uh, that mentality and start solving some of these problems ourselves. It also requires saying no. Government policy is fundamentally hostile to free enterprise and private property. We need to acknowledge that. And that requires resistance to coercion, to policies that undermine freedom in South Africa. And businesses here have a critical role to play in refusing to be co-opted by government. We are urging business to recognize its significant bargaining power. The only reason anything works in South Africa is because of the private sector, not because of the state. That is an enormous power that business potentially wields. But at the moment, we see business falling into the consensus trap, letting government take the lead. Uh, we think that businesses can solve many of the problems 
that we see caused by state failure themselves. And this leads us to our final strategic point here, taking responsibility. Individuals and communities, we at the FMF believe, must seek to solve social problems on their own rather than outsourcing this work to the government. And really this is about taking self-responsibility, which is the true, truest and best form of empowerment that you can achieve. But this isn't easy. It requires us to roll up our sleeves and to fix some very difficult and intractable problems that we see around us. So radical uh, self-ownership. Uh, we, we are not to blame for many of the problems that we see, but it is our responsibility to fix these problems. And that leads us to our motto as an organization. Uh, this is not, in fact, a new slogan that we have developed. It is something that has been with us for a long time, but we want to recenter uh, these three words, which I'll now show you. Progress through freedom. Three words, very pithy statement, but laden with meaning. Progress, we believe that human beings and societies can progress. They can grow their economies. Uh, they can create institutions and organizations and civil society bodies that can lead to human flourishing. We've seen economic and social progress take place over the last few centuries, and we want to continue that trajectory. But progress happens through a very important ingredient, freedom allowing individuals to set their own course in life. Progress doesn't happen through redistribution or through state coercion or through violating the rights of others. It happens through free human beings voluntarily and consensually uh, engaging with, in, with one another in the hard work of building. So progress through freedom is our philosophy and it remains our guiding light. I now uh, would like to hand over to Martin van Staden, who has a special surprise for you, our audience, today. But I will let him uh, introduce it. So not to detract from any of the uh, nice words that uh, both I and Terry and David have, have said so far, but this is the part of today that I've been looking forward to the most. Um, our social media and website contractors are uh, w waiting my go-ahead. Uh, they're watching us live, and I have now given them the go-ahead. They will now make our brand refresh uh, a visible reality across our platforms. Um, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce to you the Free Market Foundation's new logo. <laughs> so you would have seen pens on your seats. These are limited edition pens that, uh, uh, with our new logo uh, engraved on them to mark today's uh, special occasion. And if you haven't received one, please do not fret. You can ask me or Debbie, uh, and then we will uh, make sure you, you get one. Now, a lot of thought went into, into this symbol, into this, uh, uh, this thing that, that you, you might immediately recognize, but uh, it, it happens to be quite multifaceted. So what most people who kind of exist in our ecosystem of, call it classical liberalism, libertarianism, uh, maybe uh, classical conservatism and so on, might immediately recognize it as the, the flame atop the torch of liberty. Uh, kind of an almost a very American thing, but not really. <laughs> uh, but but uh, when we first saw this design, uh, uh, we we saw we also saw the feathered wing of a, a bird of prey. We also saw the rustling wavy grass of Africa's plains, and this all culminated in our minds, at least, uh, in a comprehensive approach to advocacy for freedom, uh, representing our philosophy, our posture, and our purpose. 
uh, about which David has, has just eloquently spoken. So we start at the bottom. The orange frame, flame of liberty, the very foundation of the free market foundation's existence, our raison d'etat. It represents our dedication to individual freedom, to individual agency, and of course, of course, to individual responsibility. Freedom is not a responsibility-less uh, phenomenon. Then it's just fun. And we don't just believe in fun, we believe in freedom. In a word, this orange uh, part of our logo represents our classical liberalism. This is our philosophy and this is our, our point of departure. It is our operating system, as it were. But what we've discovered through, the, through experience, I'm, and I'm speaking very specifically here to a South African experience, uh, is that the battle of ideas, which I never want to detract from, it is hugely important to make a better argument in the public discourse, there will always be a role for that. Uh, so while it is hugely important, it is simply inefficient. Um, uh, the, the best idea simply does not always win. That is, that we've just seen that that just doesn't happen. Uh, so to materialize and to protect liberty, something more is required. And this is not, a, this is not only a new realization, but it, also, it is also an old one. The old realization came a millennia ago, when it became clear that there can be no individual freedom or agency or responsibility without private property, uh, uh, which is in fact the practical manifestation of freedom in the real, tangible, natural world that exists around us. Uh, uh, property is, as it were, the, the thing that ensures that we as humans don't exist on top of the world, we are, we're part of the world, and that the means through which that happens is private property. Um, but it is also a new realization in, in South Africa in particular, which is uh, where the middle part of our logo comes in. The feathered wing of a predator bird, uh, the, gray, the gray wing of, a, of a, uh, an eagle. Because today we appreciate that the government, which is in theory supposed to be the protector of freedom, which is in fact supposed to be that predator bird that relentlessly advances freedom in society, has become the greatest nemesis and the greatest threat to freedom uh, in South Africa and, and in many parts of the world. So our bird of prey instead today is community. It is, it is civil society. It is those small, very, very small, unfortunately, pockets of dissent in the commercial world. That is our, 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 our protector of, of freedom. And here we see the interplay. The orange flame of liberty requires the protection, the state proofing, again with a nod to, to Piet and Salkelicha, and the fortitude offered by a strong eagle-eyed watcher, which can both defend when necessary, but also attack when necessary, in the name of liberty. And what does this all ultimately give rise to? This is the last element of our logo, the tallest, which is colored by the Free Market Foundation's signature teal. Uh, it's, it's, it's actually a, more of a blue teal, but here you can see it's actually in a very nice uh, grassy green, uh, uh, given the, the quality of the projector. Um, and this, this really represents the green grass of growth, of progress, of prosperity, uh, and, and of harmony, of social harmony. Uh, and that is the product that growth, that, uh, that harmony is the product of a liberty, the orange flame, that is secure, and that leads to harmony and, and, and progress. And there it is, the new brand identity that we hope and believe will serve us and the cause of freedom in South Africa very well. But that is not all. Before I take my seat again, I want to introduce to everyone the Free Market Foundation's new website. Now, I know many of you might feel quite relieved by this. Uh, we, we are too. <laughs> uh, and this is only our, our homepage. You can discover the full website uh, at your leisure. Uh, it, is, it has gone live. Uh, and you will discover a significantly more responsive experience uh, uh, once you visit it. Uh, here is our press release uh, from Wednesday about the uh, medium-term policy, uh, medium-term budget policy statement that, in our view, of course, didn't go nearly far enough. Uh, the left has already said that it's a speech of austerity and social programs are going to fall apart, but we don't think this guy has cut nearly enough spending, so there's still some work to be done. Um, so we really wanted our new website to be a one-stop shop for everything related to our work. Now, 
with, with such an ambitious goal and 48 years of, of history behind us, it goes without saying that it will take some time for the site to be fully populated again. Uh, so I do apologize in advance uh, if you have been, uh, if you've bookmarked one or two old FMF links uh, and, and uh, you now discover to your horror that it's no longer available, uh, that is unfortunately going to be the case. So we have to follow a manual process of bringing old content onto, onto our new fully upgraded system. Um, but do rest assured, the content has not been lost. It's still all uh, safely uh, existent uh, and it will uh, soon be available again. So David and I and, and our team, of course, are very excited to share our new approachable brand uh, and our very accessible uh, website with you all. And we hope and believe that they will be worthy representatives of the values that all of us here hold dear. Uh, and I will now, for the final time, take my seat uh, and uh, hand over to David again. Thank you. Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, yeah, the, the Marshall Eagle who you, you heard screeching in the background, it's very specifically the Marshall Eagle, because uh, in the first iteration of the brand, um, our designer had a bald eagle from the United States. And uh, <laughs> one of our board members was very quick to point that out. Uh, hey, no, uh, you need a, an African eagle there. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to our designer, uh, Leanne, who has done a fantastic job on our brand identity and on our website, so, so please uh, do give me a round of applause. And so you are here this evening at the beautiful Northwoods, and we are delighted to announce that this uh, beautiful building will be the home of the Free Market Foundation for the foreseeable future, uh, at least for the next three years, because that is the term of our lease uh, that we have. Uh, we. Um, uh, are capitalists, but we don't have much capital, so we haven't uh, we haven't bought uh, this beautiful building. Uh, it is um, owned by the Northwoods Trust, uh, which uh, was the Johannesburg College of Education Trust, and they, uh, very fortunately for us, have a preference for non-governmental organisations, non-profit organisations, uh, to reside here. Um, and our, d our team is dispersed throughout uh, South Africa, but these will be our headquarters. And uh, as you can see, it is a beautiful setting, a very regal, and there is a lot of history here. Um, it was designed by the renowned architect, Sir Herbert Baker, in 1904. And it was uh, the home of two Randlord families, uh, the Dale Laces and the Elbews. I think uh, Josie Dale Lace is, is there, or is it Josie Elbew? Uh, Dale, Dale Lace. And um, this beautiful building is very ably maintained by the curator, uh, Dr. Neil Fuyun. Um, it is often the scene of, uh, or the site of uh, classical music performances. We have a Steinway piano there. Uh, that is not to be touched, please. Uh, <laughs> um, and so we feel that aesthetics are important. It, uh, being surrounded by beauty, uh, by history, is uh, something that we really cherish. And uh, we were very happy in our, in our Bryanston offices, um, but we feel that this uh, is, is a very a fitting a setting for uh, the work that, that, that we are trying to execute. And also an acknowledgement to the wealth that was built in this country by the mining sector, the mining sector it has a rather checkered history, uh, but both of my grandfathers uh, worked in the mining sector. Um, it was uh, really the, the foundation for the industrialization of South Africa, so even uh, the manufacturing sector that, that emerged uh, throughout the 19th and 20th century was really in service of the mining sector. And uh, it is an acknowledgement of the considerable wealth and potential that this country has. Uh, and I think we need to see uh, more beautiful constructions like Northwoods uh, in South Africa in the future. But we need a much more prosperous and open environment in order to do that. But I think we can. So that is Northwoods. And we are now going to invite you to join us for a glass of wine and some canapes in the beautiful dining hall, which Dr. Fulyun has 
made available to us because of the, uh, the rather foul weather. Although uh, I lived in the United Kingdom for about a, a year and a half, and this would be a glorious summer day in the UK. Uh, but yeah, maybe us South Africans are not as tough as we think we are, because uh, uh, we can't even handle a bit of overcast weather. Um, but we look forward to welcoming you back to Northwoods in the future. Uh, we are planning uh, a new style of events, uh, uh, lectures, debates. We had a debate here with between um, Martin and uh, Dr. Ernst Roots uh, recently on Conceptions of Freedom, which you can check out on our YouTube channel. Uh, but we think this is a very appropriate venue for the new look Free Market Foundation. A new look with the same timeless principles. And we have a lot of work to do, and we invite you to join us in that project. Oh, of course. Um, that is but the first act. <laughs> we also have uh, some remarks that, uh, from some of our, our guests, uh, and Terry will do the introductions there. You're going to have to hold off on the drinks for a few more day minutes. Uh, I, I guess it's bad policy to correct the CEO when he just made, it, made some comments, but, he, but he's wrong. <laughs> he mentioned that we've just done 10,000 titles, and at the, at the recent event in Stellenbosch, I got up and I apologized to everybody that we'd brought them under there under false pretenses that we had not done 10,000. In fact, we've done over 12,000. So that's the good news of the last few months. Um, it gives me, gives me great pleasure to ask Pitt to, uh, to come and talk to us. Pitt is, as you know, the CEO of Sachelika, which is a business group that is providing scalable solutions to the state failure in South Africa. I thought when I read the, to the state failure in South Africa, I think he's concerned about unemployment. He's going to be kept busy for, for three or four lifespans. Um, so sp he will show us how to build power outside the state. Thanks. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, David, members of the board, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and um, my friends at the FMF. Um, I'm honored to have been asked to, by David to offer you the remarks at this occasion. It is an important occasion um, of the reintroduction of uh, the Free Market Foundation here at Northwoods, at Northwoods House. Uh, in the late 1980s and early 1990s, I, uh, I recall hearing and uh, growing to understand new words. Uh, I was born in 1984, so I was young then, and uh, as I'm, you, I'm, I'm not presenting to you this as a surprising fact that my vocabulary should have been expanding at the time as it was. What, what I do appreciate when I think back of, those, of hearing those new words, and I can remember them, hearing those new words, I, um, what I appreciate from those moments is that those words included terms like canton or canton and federalism or federalism and Freie Marktstichting or Free Market Foundation. My parents had read South Africa The Solution by, uh, by Leon Lowe and Francis Kendall. And I was a recipient of what cannot but be undeserved privilege, uh, some might say a burden, of, of several things combining. <clears throat> and so one thing, of course, was having parents who used such words, but that did not happen by itself. And if I may offer remarks, it'll be, um, it'll be this, uh, that there is a production structure to freedom, that many things need to combine for their over time to be things that deliver the foundations to a uh, flourishing society. And these things that combine, one can spend a long time enumerating them and investigating each of them, but I will be brief this evening. But this production structure includes things like tradition. It includes the habits and the things that we don't have to figure out all again right from the start for ourselves, but we can borrow unconsciously from habits that have formed and that have, we've seen delivered the goods. But sometimes we can also consciously investigate things. Ideas, ideas matter, and the Free Market Foundation is an example of something that has developed ideas very consciously, um, of course, borrowing unconsciously, um, but of course, then consciously developing. 
In this process, this production structure, there are people who lead this. These are the people who fund entities. These are the people who take the initiative of combining uh, into committees uh, and uh, people who suggest to others that initiative must be taken. We could call them leaders or funders or builders. And these people then combine to do something, to set up something durable. Durable things called institutions, durable things we could call less formally maybe vehicles, things that produce, things that serve as the houses, not the structures as beautiful as we have around them, but beautiful in a non or less tangible sense, but nevertheless equally real. Vehicles, institutions that combine these concepts of tradition, of ideas, of leaders and of funders into producing things that then over time lead to young boys and girls over time hearing new words and somewhere along the line uh, people taking initiative, redirecting their energies and their resources in other vehicles to complement the uh, momentum built by entities like the Free Market Foundation. So if there uh, is in, in these short remarks something about state proofing and about scalable solutions to state failure and about power because power matters and authority matters, then it is that there needs to be a production structure for the achievement of that. And I wish to uh, offer Sarklicha's best well wishes, but even before Sarklicha existed and before I had been at Sarklicha, I was a, a member of the Free Market Foundation and I benefited from dinners organized here in Johannesburg or reading and uh, in many other ways, as I've, I've briefly said. Uh, but it is that um, I wish the, the Free Market Foundation from Sarklicha and my own side all the best forward. Uh, in Afrikaans, there is an expression, kijk noord, beur voort. There are other ways of expressing that as well, but kijk noord, beur voort is the one to be used. Uh, may Northward's house serve as an inspiring home to an institution that keeps going in its mission to promote markets and offer sound economic understanding where government intervention and centralization threatens human flourishing. All the best to the Free Market Foundation. There are a few more minutes of discussions. Why don't you come and talk in the, sit in the front, yeah, people, at the back? Both sides in the front. Come right at the front. No? No. Uh, I would now, now, I haven't seen you. Oh, there's Mark. I'm sorry. <laughs> Hi, Mark. I would now like to introduce Mark uh, Oppenheimer, uh, who is an advocate of the uh, Johannesburg Bar. He's also a member of the rule of law, which I mentioned earlier, that, uh, that so is, 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 is Martin. Uh, and recently he represented the rule of law project as a counsel in the Julius Malema hate speech. <coughs> it was an appeal case against the Supreme Court of Appeal at that stage. We are very lucky to have you to say a few words. Thank you, Mark. Well, it's an absolute honor to be at this um, auspicious venue tonight. Um, this really is a shining light on the hill. Um, it's a signifier of, of freedom for other South Africans. And I think that all of you are here tonight, just a wonderful way of welcoming the Free Market Foundation on its new journey. Um, I've had the honor of um, appearing on behalf of the uh, Free Market Foundation's Rule of Law Project in three quite big cases, two before the Constitutional Court and one before the Supreme Court of Appeal. Um, one that really doesn't get enough attention, and it was something done with uh, Saki Licha, um, is on the setting aside of the preferential procurement regulations uh, put in place by the Minister of Finance. It is bang for buck probably one of the greatest pieces of litigation ever run in this country. The billions of rands of value that have been opened up um, to private businesses um, because of that litigation is just absolutely startling for a very small amount of money. Um, it shows you the power of strategic litigation. In brief, what the case was about 
was that in 2017, uh, the Minister of Finance had made it near impossible for certain businesses um, to compete in government tenders on the basis of the race of their owners, regardless of the race of their staff. So if you were a business like Fidelity Guarding Company, who joined that litigation, who employ 50,000 black men um, to guard um, uh, the, the country and to guard sort of, you know, government structures around the country, you were told because um, the owners of your business are white, uh, you will not be entitled to compete. Um, and so what you had instead was that um, um, mayors in small towns could then deny them the ability to put forward a tender, and their um, brother or cousin who just started a guarding business fortuitously two weeks ago uh, could instead uh, participate. And of course, uh, charge at a very different price uh, because you took out uh, this person from the marketplace. And because of Sarkalika's efforts and because of the rule of law project's um, intervention in that case, we were ultimately successful. 5-4, by the way. <laughs> so it was a tight victory, uh, but one that has really made it much easier for all South Africans to compete in a free marketplace, regardless of their race, uh, recognizing that non-racialism is one of those important values enshrined in Section 1 of our Constitution and an important um, idea behind any liberal institution. Uh, we'd also been involved in a case... <laughs> We'd also been involved in a case in the Constitutional Court um, involving the Zionist Federation and Mangani Masuku. Masuku had made a number of um, highly anti-Semitic and anti-Zionist statements, and the Rule of Law Project's role was to try and assist the court in determining um, where the line is between free speech and genuine hate speech. Um, we took the view that you should try and be as protective of free speech as possible that our constitution sets a very wise uh, boundary between freedom of expression and hate speech, um, and ultimately took the view that the speech uttered by Mr. Masuku, which called for uh, harm to be perpetrated against um, Jewish families, um, crossed that line. Um, we now um, are at a time where we're seeing anti-Semitism rear its ugly head again um, around the world, and um, I'm very proud to have been able to act for the Rule of Law Project in that case, which will then set a precedent um, for future um, hate speech cases. We also then acted in uh, this recent litigation around Kill the Boer. Um, the concern that we've seen um, over the last couple of years is that as much as there is an established rule about um, what constitutes free speech and what constitutes hate speech, partly from the Masuku case and partly from another matter in which I appeared um, involving John Kolani, we find that the courts have been um, less even-handed in their approach, that cases where it appears so obvious to every person uh, that you're dealing with genuine hate speech is viewed as protected, and, so, and cases where it's quite obviously protected speech, people have been sanctioned. And so we then um, pointed out to the Supreme Court of Appeal the importance of the rule of law, the importance of treating people equally before the law, regardless of their race. But taking into uh, consideration as uh, the international norms requires to do, which is to take into account the status of the speaker. That if you're a little old lady like Penny Sparrow in the middle of nowhere, you have absolutely no power. If you're Julius Malema and you run the third biggest political party in the country, um, polling at 17% for the next elections, if you can command 90,000 people uh, at a stadium and that you can openly call for the murder of people on the grounds of their ethnic group, that's speech worth paying attention to um, and that the rules must be applied evenly. So. Uh, we were, we were able to produce our arguments in front of that court. Um, I also think something that Pitt has uh, raised that's very important is that there are not many people in South Africa who are willing to fight for freedom. Some of them are scared, but there are some who've put up their heads, put up their hands, um, gotten stuck in and do the work, and it's important that you support those organizations. Um, Sarkalik is doing wonderful work, the Free Market Foundation is doing wonderful work, as is the Institute for Race Relations, as is Afri Forum and Solidarity. Um, I think as well that recognizing that uh, when groups are targeted on the grounds of their race or their beliefs, that it's worth protecting each other, even if you're not a member. That um, the council who acted for the Human Rights Commission on behalf of the Zionist Federation in the Masuku case is Afrikaans. Um, and that meant an enormous amount to the Jewish community, that he was willing to defend their interests. And I find it one of the great pleasures that I have um, to act on behalf of the Afrikaans community to protect people that are persecuted on the grounds of their ethnicity. So thank you very much for tonight. I look forward to celebrating with you for many years to come.
Thanks, uh, Mark. Lovely to have you here. We've got some real intellectuals, as I say. It's quite, quite awe-inspiring. Um, I'd like to now call on is it Dr. John ben, Don, Dr. John Henrys, who we thought may not come, but John, thank you for coming. Uh, he had something else. Uh, he is the CEO of the Institute of Racial Relations, and he has a formidable history of John Kane Berman, uh, Franz Cronier, and I think that he's fitted into the boots extremely well. Martin and uh, Martin and um, David said to me they ex employees and they told me all sorts of stories which I won't tell. But don't worry. <laughs> Thanks, John. Thank you. Uh, good, good evening, everyone. Um, I'd love to hear those stories. So <laughs> maybe we'll have, let's have a glass of wine afterwards and just uh, have a little exchange about that. Um, but indeed, it is correct. Uh, David and Martin and I are former colleagues, and I was very pleased when David took over the Free Market Foundation because I realized the importance of this organization in the South African context. It has a very proud history and a very important role to play in our country. There is a community of people gathered here this evening that are in support of freedom, prosperity, growth, and flourishing. And I think that it is worthwhile to recall to our memories the reasons why these organizations exist and what they are trying to achieve. The vision they have for the future of the country is one where South Africans are free and equal and enjoy the civil liberties of freedom of speech, association, of trade, of movement, all the basics, many of which we do have now after the liberation of 1994 and which we did not have before. They were unequally distributed in those days. Where we are falling short at the moment as a nation is in the area of generating prosperity. Our growth rate is too low and people are not seeing their incomes rising. And I think this is where the focus of many civil society organizations has to be at the moment. The Free Market Foundation falls squarely into that bracket to promote free markets and allow enterprise to thrive, to create economic growth across the board, to create jobs, and to create rising incomes. And I think that is very much a vision that is shared by the IRR as well. Uh, and we are proud to be uh, associated with you, um, you know, through bonds of collegiality, uh, of communication, and of shared purpose. This is a beautiful building. Um, this is my, my, my second time here, um, and it is uh, an absolutely stunning venue. And I congratulate the Free Market Foundation on having secured it and wish you many, many happy years and productive years and towards a flourishing future for South Africa. So very well done. Thank you. Thank you. Just a few words to conclude. Um, I mentioned recently that we had our 10,000 celebration for, for the titles in, in Stellenbosch. And it's quite uh, frightening that people were not happy with 10,000. They said, we've got to get to 100,000. Not easy. As somebody pointed out, the, last year we did 3,000. If there are 100,000 still to do, and there are many more, at 3,000, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to know it's going to take you 30 odd years to do that. So we've got to do more quickly. And so we're now scaling up. Um, and at the, after the, after the uh, discussion when I went home, I thought, you know, maybe there's something is more important than these houses. Everybody thinks the houses are the most important. Mandela said you couldn't be a, a man, cannot be a man unless he has his own, own home and so on. But there is possibly a thing that's more important, and I think John just touched on it. He used the word growth. It really does solve just about every problem that there is. It, the, history, the, the, the evidence is there. Uh, the numbers will tell you 7% growth, which is achievable, achievable in this free market we're all talking about, would mean that we would have all been eight times wealthier between 94 and now. That's, that would solve a lot of our problems, and most of those people who we would have been given titles to would have been able to buy their own. So it is true that that's the fact that economic freedom would lead to the other sort of growth. <clears throat> And the, the problem is, is that we have, to be, we have to be able to not only talk about growth, I get very frustrated, and that's putting it politely. I guarantee you that 99 out of 100 articles you read in the newspaper wherever talks about the importance of growth. It really does. Please, if you ever see somebody specifically say afterwards what has to be done, please send it to me. It's all we need growth. We have a magic wand. We want growth. We, I think, in the foundation, the race loan, everybody has to has to actually spell that out in great detail. We have Neil Emigriar, who's, who, who's done an incredible amount of work in the e economic freedom of the world. 
It's almost a menu. If you want to have a free, if you want to have a rich country, just go and look at economic freedom of the world, and Neil will tell you about that. So we have to tell them the how. We just don't. I don't think we have to talk about our problems anymore. Everybody knows that. We have to now go on and advance and say how we do it. To do this, I think we're very, very fortunate in the Free Market Foundation. We have our chair, Rex von, Rex von Staden. We have Menton Gal there. I also want to just mention that she was there. Tim, Tim who you saw and used to stay be. Uh, we have Mark in the rule of law. We've got friends such as IRR and Sarkalicha and so on. And I think with a group of people like this, an organization, we can do something. So we've had some turbulent times, we know that, but we have to go and we're delighted that we're back again. And just finally, it is now <coughs> very important. We all, we all understand the, the importance of ideas as being one of the threads that are this evening going through. I've been following USA politics very closely. I, in fact, I'm horrified at what's going on there. If you think it's bad here, America, I think, is poss potentially worse. To me, it is the last bastion of freedom in the world. They are the few people that the American Constitution understands what individual freedom is. And they recently had this big battle in the House where the, spe the past speaker was kicked out. And I happened to listen to the, I don't know if you've listened to the new speaker, I think his name is uh, Mike Johnson. Spoke beautifully. But he said there are seven things, and off the top of my hand I remember he spoke about individual freedom, rule of law, limited, market, limited government, free markets. And I thought, gosh, if we could one day get a politician here and say that sort of thing, then we know we've won. And I think that we will have success when that happens. And so I think the f we, we are very proud of our 45-year history or so about. Uh, as I mentioned, we've had the wobbles. But I think that the future is in very, very good hands. Or should I so rather say in good minds? It's people like David and Milan, <laughs> David and Martin, my David and Martin, who will, I think, be great freedom, fighters for freedom in the future. And thank you very much. Please. <laughs> now, apparently, we are getting drinks. You can get it, but, but you have free. We're not going outside, David. Is that right? It's just through here. It's probably more productive if we all go, all go, go around the way. Thank you very much. Enjoy yourself. Yeah, let's just try to get everyone to where they need to go. <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you. I'm just going to hang back a little bit so I can...